using cost-volume-profit relationships to predict outcomes based upon change. We're assuming there's a lot of stability in the cost-volume-profit relationships seen in a contribution format income statement. Therefore, based upon that stability, we can predict some changes based upon um, different plans that management will have. Cost volume profit analysis can be used in powerful ways to predict net income when projecting possible changes based upon management's plans. The contribution format income statement will be used and in this we're going to be looking at a consistent ratio of variable expenses to sales as well as the contribution margin to sales because variable expenses should be able to be expressed on a per unit basis and the contribution margin should be able to be expressed on a per unit basis. Therefore, since it can be expressed on a per unit basis, it will have consistent ratios relative to sales. Uh, variable expenses, once we have sold something, we're assuming that variable expenses related to sales will be incurred. Therefore, the only thing that will be left over will be the contribution margin to contribute towards fixed expenses. Fixed expenses are grouped together and deducted from the contribution margin in order to yield net operating income. We can't assume a stable relationship between fixed expenses and sales because fixed expenses don't change, whereas the sales volumes will change. Therefore, as a per, on a per unit basis, you cannot express fixed costs. Setting up the information to solve problems. As much as possible, you should always set up the information in the same way each time, on a total dollar basis, on a per unit basis, and see we have a consistent relationship. And we're always going to assume that variable expenses are going to be 58% of sales, and the contribution margin at $2.52 will be 42% of sales. Based on the stability inherent in these relationships, we'll be able to predict a lot of outcomes based upon various scenarios that management may have. Changes in units sold, a new net profit. Manage, management projects that 3,000 units will be sold. How to calculate the new profit? At present, we are selling 2,000 units. So on a unit basis, multiply the new number of units times the contribution margin per unit and deduct fixed expenses. This is a quantity to unit relationship. 3,000 new units to be sold. The contribution margin per unit is $2.52. We're going to deduct from that our fixed expenses, and that should give us our total new profit. We can't look at this on an incremental basis since we're asking or trying to determine the total new profit. So in order to do that, we must look at total profit minus fixed expenses. Or we can simply restate the contribution format income statement using 3000 as our volume. 3000 times $6 sales price per unit. 3000 times $3.48 as the uh, variable cost per unit. And we get the same $7,560 from which we'll subtract the 4000 fixed expenses. Uh, this scenario, the unit basis scenario, just truncates this analysis, a full-fledged restatement of the contribution format income statement, because it's looking at 3,000 times the contribution margin um, uh, per unit. Next, we're going to look at um, using the unit basis and the dollar basis and restating the contribution format income statement is a way to solve all of these problems. The best and most stable way is to constantly restate the contribution margin, I'm sorry, the contribution format income statement and compare it to the original data or just recalculate it. However, there are some shortcuts that I want to show you. So I'm going to show it to you on a unit basis and a dollar basis. It just depends upon your preference how you like to look at things. So in this instance, management projects that 3,000 units will be sold, an increase of 1,000 units. How to calculate the incremental effect of the change? And by that, I mean someone would be saying in a meeting, we're going to sell 1,000 more units. How much more income will we have? Well, they don't necessarily want it on a total dollar basis because you'd have to calculate that, then subtract the original data in order to come up with the difference. What they're just saying is, what is going to be the impact of selling 1,000 more units? So calculating it on a unit basis, we can multiply the incremental increase in number of units times the contribution margin per unit. Again, looking at quantity to unit price or unit per unit um, values as the relationship. So it's a thousand units we're going to sell. 
the contribution margin per unit is two dollars and fifty two cents and the new net pro I mean the new incremental change based upon selling a thousand more units will be two dollars and uh, two thousand rather uh, five hundred and twenty dollars again we're looking at the incremental increase so in this instance we're only looking at the thousand not the three thousand that will be sold on a dollar basis you multiply the dollar increase in incremental units, incremental units sold by the contribution margin ratio again this is a sales to ratio type of relationship that you'll be looking at so a thousand new units times six dollars per unit six thousand in sales times forty two percent which is the contribution margin percentage uh, the new uh, incremental change will be $2,520. Again, you can restate the contribution format income statement, but when you do that, since we're not just calculating the new total 3,000 units being sold, we're comparing the 3,000 units now being sold to the 2,000 units that were being sold in order to differentiate the incremental change. Again, notice we can stop looking at the incremental change at the contribution format, um, the, at the contribution margin um, portion of the contribution format income statement. We can look at it at this level because this is where the change is. There will be no change in fixed expenses in this scenario, so the incremental effect will be seen at the contribution margin level. Now let's look at it when we're predicting a 20% increase in sales. How to calculate the total new profit. On a unit basis, we would multiply the number of units by the percentage increase times the contribution margin per unit and subtract the fixed expenses. Again, we're looking at the total change, so we have to look at it in total and subtract the fixed expenses. Again, we're looking at a quantity to unit per unit um, relationship. So this will be 2,000, which is the amount of sales that we presently have, and then we're going to multiply it by the total, of, total change which will be 120% or 1.20. This will give us 2,400 new, um, uh, new as a new level of sales that we're going to have. Multiply that by the contribution margin per unit, subtract the fixed expenses, and this should be our total new profit. To calculate it on a dollar basis, you would multiply the total dollar percentage increase by the contribution margin ratio and then subtract the fixed expenses. Again, looking at a sales to ratio type of relationship. So presently we're selling 12,000. Then we're going to multiply that by the expected change of 120% or 1.20. That will give us our no, new total dollar sales. Multiply that by the contribution margin percentage. Deduct the fixed expenses. And again, we get the same total of $2,048. Or we can simply restate the contribution format income statement. This is done on a dollar basis, and this is done on a per unit basis. The dollar basis has uh, the ratios that we're going to be looking at. So we're going to increase the sales by the 120%, but we have a new sales level that we have to multiply by the variable expense percentage. So this one can be a little bit trickier to calculate. I would advocate to use the unit basis and multiply the new number of units you expect to sell by the price per unit but times also the variable expenses per unit and that will give you the same answer. Management projects a 20% increase in sales. How to calculate the incremental effect of the change? So since we're looking at the incremental effect of the change, we can stop at the contribution margin level. On a unit basis, multiply the number of units by the incremental percentage change increase times the contribution margin per unit. So instead of multiplying 2,000 units that we're presently selling by 120%, we're going to multiply it by the incremental change, which will be 20%. So we'll be selling five, oh, sorry, 400 more units times the contribution margin per unit, and then our incremental increase will be $1,008. On a dollar basis, multiply the total dollar incremental percentage increase by the contribution margin ratio. We were selling 12,000 each month and now we're going to have an increase of 20%. So that means that we will be selling 2,400 units, I'm sorry, in dollars. 2,400 will be our new sales. Multiply that by the contribution margin percentage and this is our new incremental increase in sales. Again, you can restate the contribution format income statement and compare it to the original data. You may want to pause here and just look at these changes. And again, I advocate doing it on a unit per unit basis because it's a little less confusing. 
So now we have a proposed change in fixed cost to increase sales. Should management increase the cost? Let's look at it on a basis of a new net profit. Management projects that a 30% increase or 600 units in sales will be added if, an ad, if the ad budget of fixed cost is increased by $1,000. How to calculate the new net income or loss should management incur the cost? So on a unit basis, multiply the total number of units times the contribution margin per unit minus the new total fixed cost and compare to the original. This one we have 2,000 units that we're presently selling, so now we say we have a 130% increase, so now we expect to be selling 2,600 units. Contribution margin per unit, total new uh, contribution margin, then we're going to subtract from that our total new fixed costs. Originally our fixed costs were $4,000, but now we have an additional $1,000 that we want to spend, so we should see an increase in sales to the amount of $1,552. On a dollar basis, multiply the total dollar increase by the contribution margin ratio minus the new fixed cost and then compare it to the original. In this instance, we have 12000 that we were selling. We're going up by 130%. We're going to multiply that by our contribution margin ratio. This will be our new total profit and then we're going to subtract from that our new fixed cost and this is the amount that we expect to increase. When we compare $1,552 to the $1,040 that we were having as a, a, new, a net income, we would see that that would be a good increase. It's going to be an increase of $512. So that would be an increase and so therefore management may want to consider spending the extra money on the ad costs. Again, you can restate the contribution format income statement and compare it. This is on a dollar basis and this is on a unit basis. What you would want to be doing is looking at the $512 in order to see if this was an increase. This gives you the total dollar, but this gives you by comparing it to the prior amounts that we were selling whether or not this is an increase. Proposed change in fixed cost to increase sales should management increase the cost the incremental effect. This is probably the better way to look at this to solve whether or not management should incur the cost. Management projects 30% increase in sales if the ad budget of fixed cost is increased by $1,000. How to calculate the new incremental effect should management incur the cost. On a unit basis, we will multiply the new number of units times the contribution margin per unit minus the new fixed cost and compare it to the original. So in this instance, our incremental increase is 30%, so we're selling 600 more units times the, multi of the, I'm sorry, the contribution margin per unit. Our, our new fixed cost is $1,000, so based upon this, we should see an increase of $512 in sales. Now, whether or not that's uh, what management is looking for is another question, but at least you know that the increase will be $512. On a dollar basis, you can multiply the dollar increase by the contribution margin ratio minus the new fixed cost and compare it to the original. Again, 12,000, we're going to multiply it by 30% just for the incremental increase, not 130% for the total increase. Multiply it by 42%, the contribution margin ratio, our new contribution margin, our new fixed cost, and this is going to be the incremental increase. Again, restate it to the contribution margin format income statement and compare. Again, pause it here and you can look at it, but again, I advocate you doing it on a unit basis. A proposed change in variable cost to increase profits, what is the new profit? Management can decrease variable cost to $3 per unit. How will this change total profits? So at present, our variable costs are $3.48. So now, because we have a new variable cost, we have to relook at it and recalculate things on a per unit basis and on a ratio basis, because instead of having a 58% variable costs, now our variable costs are lower and they're now they're 50% of sales and our contribution margin is also 50% of sales. So on a unit basis, multiply the total units by the new contribution margin per unit and deduct the fixed costs. So 2000, our contribution margin per unit now is $3. 
This means that our new contribution margin is 6000 from which we'll subtract the 4000 in fixed expenses. And so now our new profit should be 2000 On a dollar basis, multiply the total sales dollars times the new variable cost ratio and deduct the fixed expenses. So total, the total sales are 12000 Our new contribution margin ratio is 50%, so 6000 in sales. Minus 4,000 in fixed costs means that our new profit is 2,000. And we can see it by simply restating the contribution format income statement. And this is what this does. Con restate the contribution format income statement using the new variable and contribution margin information. So 2,000 units, $6 per unit that you're selling it for, 2,000 times $3 in costs, variable costs. And so you see that the whole uh, increase is 2,000 in total. We were uh, seeing a profit of $1,040 when we were selling and had a variable expense of $3.48. But now that we can see that it's a $960 increase by reducing variable costs down to $3 per unit. Uh, the proposed change in variable cost to increase profit, the incremental effect. Uh, this is a very good way to look at this. Management can decrease value of expenses to $3 a unit. How to calculate the incremental effect. On a unit basis, so just we're looking at the incremental effect, on a unit basis, multiply the unit by each contribution margin, margin rather, and calculate the difference. So originally it was, I mean, I'm sorry, it's $2,000 times $3 per unit at um, 6,000 is exactly what we expect now as our contribution margin, and it was 2,000 units at $2.52, which was the old contribution margin per unit. So we take the old contribution margin per unit and subtract it from the new one, and we see that we're going to gain $960. Doing it on a dollar basis, multiply the units by each contribution margin and calculate the difference. So $12,000 is what we expect to sell. Our new contribution margin ratio is 50%, which means that it's $6,000. It was $5,040. Again, we see the same increase. Same way, same calcula um, same result, just different calculations, just depending upon which is your preference. And um, I would advocate for this to just restate the contribution margin income statement and compare it to the original. So now this is your new one. This was the one you had prior. Sorry, when you had prior, and so now this is your new incremental change. Um, when you're going to restate the contribution format income statement, you just have to do the entire thing. Um, proposed change in variable cost to increase sales, a new profit. Management would use a new high quality component. This entails an increase of 52 cents in variable cost per unit, but will increase sales by 50%. What is the new total profit? Um, I'm, I'm going to look at new total profit. I would just simply restate the contribution format income statement in its entirety. So now we're expecting a 50% increase in sales. So uh, 12,000 times 1.5 or 150% is 18,000 in sales. Our variable costs now have changed to $4 per unit. They were $3.48, but now we're adding a new high quality component and it increased by 52 cents. So now it's a $4 per unit for our variable expenses. So I've multiplied that times the increase in sales. We're expecting 3,000 to sell 3,000 units now. And so that gives us a variable expenses of 12000 a new contribution margin of 6000 Our fixed expenses haven't changed, and so now this is our new profit. So that's how I would do it in order to calculate the total new profit. Looking at the incremental effect, same scenario, multiply the uh, unit basis, multiply the total new units by the new contribution margin per unit and compare. So it's now, it's, we were selling 2,000, we expect a 150% increase, so now it means that we're going to be selling 3,000 um, units. Now our contribution margin per unit, the new one is $2, so multiply that by $2, and that's $6,000. It was 2,000 units times $2.52, which meant there was a contribution margin of $5,040, and there's an increase of $960. On a dollar basis, multiply the new total dollar sales by the new contribution margin ratio and compare. So $12,000 times 150% increase is $18,000. Our new contribution margin uh, ratio is 33%. 
This means that it'll be six thousand dollars. Our old one was five thousand forty dollars, which means there's an increase of nine hundred and sixty. Or you could simply restate the contribution format income statement using the new information and compare, which is this calculation here. And we can see by making this change, we're going to be making two thousand dollars a month as opposed to one thousand forty dollars a month.